We welcome everyone to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish as we celebrate the Nativity of our Lord. Our entrance hymn is number 201, O Come, All Ye Faithful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have great a sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people Thank you. 
thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all your lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Announce his salvation day after day. 
Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exalt. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. They shall exalt before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I proclaim to you good news of great joy. Today a Savior is born for us, Christ the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the hills and living in the fields and keeping night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. 
For behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. We gather to celebrate the solemnity of the nativity of our Lord, the birthday of Jesus Christ, the Mass at midnight. The Church places before us for this solemnity of Christmas many different passages of Scripture. At the Vigil, we hear from the Gospel of Matthew about how the ancestor, the genealogy of Jesus, recorded from Abraham and David down to Jesus, a long list of names of this man is the father of this man is the father of that man, names that are hard for us to pronounce and we don't recognize. For those who lived at the time that our Lord was born, they would have known those names. When at that time when the sun went down, we couldn't work outside anymore. There were candles for light. There were some oil candles, oil lights. And they would gather around in the house, around the fireplace or around a candle, and they would talk, and they would pray, and they would tell stories, and talk about their parents, and their grandparents, and their great-grandparents, and their ancestors way back. And the children would know these persons and know these names. St. Matthew recounts the various different persons who are in the genealogy of Jesus. And amongst this man is the father of this man is the father of this man. St. Matthew lists four women. These four women break up the order of this man is the father of this man. These four women were faithful to God and to his plan when others had been unfaithful. These four women were a part of that genealogy that allowed Joseph and Mary to be in the genealogy of Jesus, the Son of God. And when we hear these four women, it does not surprise us to hear the fifth woman, Mary, the mother of Jesus. God has a plan in history he has a plan in each of our lives. And he wants us to open our heart to his grace. We have been doing that during the four weeks of Advent, reflecting on those years and years, centuries and centuries, when the Israelites were longing and waiting and hoping for the coming of the Messiah. We have spent these last four weeks of Advent waiting, preparing, hoping for that event of our Lord, his birth. There are some who would say, don't you know, he was born 2,000 years ago. It has already happened. What are we doing? Trying to change our mind and say, yeah, we're going to say it happened tonight. No, 
He has been born 2,000 years ago, but he's coming in mystery this evening. In the celebration of Christmas, especially at the sacrifice of the Mass. And as we celebrate this great gift, this solemnity, and reflect upon our Lord's coming, we would do well to ponder what all that means, how he comes to us in mystery. Some of us during this, these weeks of Advent have been preparing through prayer, preparing through visits to our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, coming to daily Mass, maybe reading a little bit more from the Bible, the infancy narratives, or reading uh, the book that many of us have been reading, the Rejoice Advent Meditations of the Holy Family. Two years ago, there was the Rejoice Advent Meditations of Mary. Last year was Rejoice Advent Meditations on Joseph. Today, this year, on the Holy Family. The author observed that we see statues and pictures of Mary and Jesus, statues and pictures of Joseph and Jesus, statues and pictures of Joseph and Mary and Jesus, but we don't often see pictures or statues of Joseph and Mary. And we reflected during this Advent season on the marriage of Joseph and Mary. And what was that like? And that reflection on the marriage of Joseph and Mary is helpful to each of us, no matter what our vocation in life is, whether we are married, whether we are single, whether we are priests or religious sister, Whatever is our vocation, even if we happen to be widowed or widower or divorced, we can ponder and reflect on this great mystery. One of the meditations, reflections was being rerouted. Joseph had his plans. He was planning to build a home, a house for Mary, and he was betrothed to her and they weren't living together yet. And then, then he finds out she's pregnant and his plans are rerouted. And they're rerouted again as we hear in the gospel this morning that a census is called. And now he has to journey from Nazareth down to Bethlehem. All of that rearranges his plan. You and I have plans in our mind, in our life. We're going to do this. We're going to go here. And then this is going to happen. We have it all laid out and all structured. And sometimes we experience that God reroutes our plans. What do we do when our plans are rerouted? How do we respond? Where did Joseph and Mary go? Where did their hearts go? Where does my heart and your heart go? The Lord wants our heart to go to him, to rest with him, to allow him to take root in our heart and to help us to be who he wants us to be. Joseph and Mary needed to give each other space during this time. They were husband and wife, and yet they needed to in this stressful time, give each other space. And they needed to be open to the Lord's gifts. Then they were to receive his gifts, receive his graces. In our world, sometimes people say that we grab this and get this and take that. We are to receive our Lord, receive his graces, Receive him into our heart and soul as we ponder, as we reflect and spend time with him. We also know that God gives us our time and he gives us our life and our faith. And you have given to the Lord your time this evening to come to Mass, to come to join in the celebration of the sacrifice of the Mass. 
Jesus, the Son of God, humbled himself to become a man, to become a little baby, to be born in an insignificant town in Bethlehem and be raised in Nazareth. Jesus humbled himself even to death, death on a cross. He sacrificed himself for us. And he came as the Son of God, as the light of the world to scatter the darkness of sin. And we await his coming. He has come already in history. He's coming into our hearts. And you have sacrificed your time to come here and join your, yourself, your mind, your body, your soul, your will, to sacrifice and to be present at the Mass. And those who are Catholics will be able to receive our Lord in Holy Communion, receive his body, his blood, his soul, his, his soul and divinity into our bodies, into our souls, to be that food for the journey. Sometimes the author in that reflection on the Holy Family asked, do we think of life as a journey or as a destination? Sometimes people talk about destinations or talk about journeys. The author reflected that it's really a pilgrimage, a pilgrimage which involves sacrifice, a pilgrimage which is not done by ourselves, but done with others and done especially with our Lord. We are each on a pilgrimage through life. And we are sacrificing and seeking to open our heart to the Lord's grace. Husbands and wives are invited to be reflecting and praying and talking with each other on how do they live as husband and wife? How can they learn from the example of Joseph and Mary? Parents with children and children with parents. Each of us with friends are called to say, how do we interact with other persons? How do we pray? How do we live our faith? How do we receive the gifts that God wants to give to us through others? How do we journey in this pilgrimage? And how do we do this not just for one day, have we been preparing for four weeks for a day or for a person? Hopefully we have each been preparing for a person, for the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Mary, the Son of Joseph, who comes into the world to save us from sins. And Christmas is more than a day. Christmas continues for the season of Christmas. It continues till January 11th or 12th, the last day of the Christmas season. And we continue to be, be persons that are to invite and welcome Jesus into our life as we continue our pilgrimage of life. We ask for the Lord's grace that we strive to let him come into our hearts let his body, his blood, his soul, divinity so fill us and change us that we become more and more like him and that as we go forth from our prayer at the sacrifice of the Mass that we, we take our Lord with us as nourishment to help us to live our faith and invite others to welcome our Lord to be on pilgrimage with them. The more that we open our heart to the Lord and we let him help us and strengthen us, the better we will be filled with his grace, with his peace, with that joy, that joy that comes from the Lord and is directed toward him and is not from pleasure or happiness here on earth. May the Lord strengthen each of us to join ourselves with the sacrifice of the Mass and to celebrate this uh, midnight mass on the nativity, the birth of our Lord, and allow him who became man for us 
to uh, continue to invite us to be on pilgrimage with him in our life and to let his light so fill us that we are walking with him and he is lighting our way in this pilgrimage. The world around us has, and we have faced many challenges during this year. And we might focus on the challenges, on the problems. Someone, one author or one speaker said that a great phrase, give up the hope of a better past. Give up the hope of a better past. Our past has happened. The weaknesses, the sins, the failures, the strengths, you and I can't go back and change that. We live in the present moment. We live in the present moment, opening our heart to the God's grace. He initiates his grace to us. We have the opportunity to respond, the opportunity to live in the present moment and to continue to let his grace strengthen us in this pilgrimage to be who he wants us to be each day of our life. Each Sunday, each Saturday, as we come to Mass, we stand after the homily to profess our faith. And during the, the creed, we are invited to bow our heads during those two lines to talk about the incarnation of God becoming man. On this solemnity of Christmas, the church asks us not just to bow our heads, but to genuflect at those two lines. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, man, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In Christmas joy and hope, we present all our needs to our Heavenly Father with confidence. For the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that as she celebrates the birth of Christ, she may grow in holiness. We pray to the Lord. For all those who do not yet believe in Christ, that they may know that today a Savior is born for them. We pray to the Lord. For our country and those who lead it, that true freedom and justice may reign, we pray to the Lord. For lasting peace throughout the world, that the coming of the Prince of Peace will put an end to all divisions and unify the peoples of the world, we pray to the Lord. For families, that the graces of Christmas will draw family members together 
in lasting bonds of peace and love, we pray to the Lord. For the poor, the homeless, and the unemployed, let Jesus Christ, who came into the world as one who was poor, will love and rescue them. We pray to the Lord. For all Christians, that they may respond to the universal call to holiness by living their faith each day with great fervor, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, that by the power of Christ's birth on earth, they may be born in heaven, we pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, for the people of our parish, and for our own intentions, united with Mary, the Mother of God, and all the saints, we add in silence. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, darkness is forever changed because of the birth of the eternal life, our Lord Jesus Christ. Take all the darkness of our lives and replace it with the radiance of our newborn Savior. Help us to open our heart to your grace and to Deepen our love for our family members and for other friends and for you, Lord. We ask these prayers in union with the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad before the face of the Lord, for he cometh. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I will use Eucharistic prayer number one, found on page 11 in the Pew Missal. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offered to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Word became flesh, and we have seen His glory. Catholics who will be receiving Holy Communion are invited to come up to the Communion Rail. If you are unfamiliar with the communion rail, please know that you may receive communion either kneeling at the rail or standing at the rail, either on the tongue or in the hand. If you live in the same home, husband, wife, family, children, you may be close together. Otherwise, please keep a social distance or some blue X's on the floor to assist you. After one group has received communion at the communion rail, the next group is asked to please wait until the ushers wipe the communion rail and then to come forward. Any who for some reason will not be receiving Holy Communion, uh, pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Our communion hymn is number 241, Silent Night. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may, through an honorable way of life, become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Would you be seated for a little bit, please? We have a letter from our bishop to the clergy, religious, and lay faithful of the Diocese of Lincoln. A joyous Christmas to you. I wish to, I wish you well this Christmas as you gather together with your families, your friends, and your parish to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. During this challenging year, the Lord has invited us to deeper faith, trust, confidence, and hope. He is the only one that can make sense of our struggles. Christmas reminds us that he became little and humble for us, so that we might come to know him as our merciful Savior, who shared our earthly existence. One great sign of hope this year is our celebration of the witness of St. Joseph. As Pope Francis said in Patris Corde, quote, 
each of us can discover in Joseph the man who goes unnoticed, a daily discreet and hidden presence, an intercessor, a support, and a guide in times of trouble. St. Joseph reminds us that those who appear hidden or in the shadows can play an incomparable role in the history of salvation." End quote. Your own Christian witness to the importance of prayer, the beauty and dignity of human life and fidelity to your vocation are great gifts to God, to your brothers and sisters in Christ and to the world. God's grace is evident in your willingness to share in the work of redemption. I entrust you and your loved ones to the care and intercession of St. Joseph as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Please be assured of my prayers for you and your families, especially in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. I remain sincerely yours in Christ, James D. Conley, Bishop of Lincoln. I was reminded yesterday afternoon, I had forgotten, that a good friend of mine asked me, was I going to wear the vestment that, you know, a year and a half ago in May of 2019, I was blessed with some others to go on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And at Bethlehem, they gave me this vestment. And it was in a bag and was packed and I brought it back and that's the last I saw. And uh, thank another good friend who uh, took time to get out some of the wrinkles that were there and have it ready for the three o'clock mass and the five o'clock mass and tonight. Great gift from Bethlehem where our Lord was born. But it's not something that we look back in memory and say, oh, wasn't that nice? Isn't that a nice thing? We are living in the present moment. And each of us are called to allow the Lord's grace to touch us in our present moment. When we find our challenges in life, maybe from the world, maybe from our own weaknesses, maybe from interactions with other persons, we respond to the Lord's invitation and we let his grace help us to interact better with spouses, with children, with friends, to allow the Lord's grace to help us and to touch us. On the table in the narthex, there are two different books, different colors. You can see the difference. And one is by Matthew Kelly. One is by St. Mother Teresa. I invite you, encourage you to pick up each of them. Don't just stop with one. Pick up two. If you'll take it home and read it. Allow the Lord to help you to set up a regular schedule where at different times each day you will... Take time to pray, to thank God, to do a little reading, these books or the Bible or other catechism books, and to deepen your faith and to allow the Lord to help you grow closer to him. I want to extend my prayer and my blessing to each of you that you may have a, a blessed, a holy, and a merry Christmas. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. 
and close to you bid me that with your saints I may be praising you forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. I might observe that those books are not just for our parishioners, they're for any and all who are here. You sacrificed of your time to come to Mass. Uh, receive a gift and use it in your spiritual life. Our recessional hymn is number 177, Joy to the World. Far as far as is found, far as. 